Hello everyone, my name is Bin Yang. Today I'll present the paper KPConf, Flexible and Deformable Convolution for Point Clouds. Point cloud data has drawn significant attention from both industry and academia. More and more active sensors like depth sensor or LIDARs are being used in various applications like home entertainment, self-driving, mobile phones, and tablets. On the right side, I did a simple research that counts how many papers are published on archive with point cloud in their titles. From the figure, we can see a dramatic increase of interest from academic researchers in this field. With great opportunities also come great challenges. The point cloud data itself is not grid structured with unordered elements in continuous space and is often sparse with varying densities. Previous works have been using off-the-shelf neural networks to process such data, like convolutional neural network, multi-layer perceptron, and graph convolutional network. However, directly applying these architectures to point cloud data brings many issues like expensive computation, loss of fine details, or limited flexibility. In this paper, the authors point out that previous and concurrent works on point cloud representation learning have several shortcomings. In particular, projection networks first transform the point clouds to 2D images or 3D grids, and then apply confnets to process them with limited kernel size like 3 times 3 times 3. Graph convolutional networks aggregate information over edges, which ignore the local surface defined by the neighbors. Pointwise MLPs is hard to capture local shapes in a simple and efficient manner. And the recent point convolution networks suffer from limited flexibility or representative power. In this paper, the authors propose a new type of point convolution that learns the kernel function to compute pointwise filters, and also propose a deformable variant that increases the representative power. The paper also shows state-of-the-art performance in a variety of tasks with faster training and inference time for deep architectures. Here we revisit two simple concepts to better understand the paper. First is 2D convolution, where we apply a translation invariant kernel in a sliding window manner to the input image. The kernel shape is usually grid-like, which defines the shape and size of the local neighborhood. In one convolution layers, we apply k different kernels with learnable weight matrix of shape d in times d out, which transforms the input feature from one dimension to another. The second concept is a kernel trick, which is widely known in SVM, where the idea is that the data points can be less discriminative in low dimension, but linearly separable in higher dimension. And the kernel function transforms the data points into a higher dimension metric space. Before we go into details of KPConf, let's first define the input data notation. We assume that a point cloud is composed of a set of points P in 3D coordinates with their corresponding features F. These features can be some simple pointwise attributes. A general form of the kernel point convolution is very similar to a basic convolution operator. Specifically, activation of applying kernel G to input data F at point X equals a weighted sum of neighboring point features, where the neighborhood n here is defined as a ball in 3D space with radius r. The kernel function g defines the weight for each, neighbor, for each neighboring point, and intuitively, we want it to apply different weights to different areas inside the neighborhood. In 2D convolutions, the function g is usually defined as a 3 times 3 weight matrix. Here in KPConf, G is defined by K support points, also known as kernel points. Each kernel point X tilt has a learnable weight W multiplied by a correlation factor H that measures how much this kernel point and each neighboring point YI are correlated with one another. In the bottom left, we show a visualization of KPConf, where the purple point X defines the center location where we apply the convolution. The evenly spaced the red points are the predefined kernel points, and the blue points are all the neighboring points inside the neighborhood. The correlation function h, by, by intuition, should be higher when two points are closer. Therefore, it's defined simply as follows, which lies between 0 and 1, and increases as two points are closer in distance. 
Here, the sigma is a hyperparameter that is set according to the input point density. Here, we compare the KP conf with regular 2D convolution. At each convolution location, 2D conf uses rectangular shape like 3 times 3 as a local neighborhood, while KP conf uses a 3D ball. For each element of the kernel, 2D conf uses the center position of each grid box, while KP conf uses several 3D points in continuous space. Where the kernel points can be predefined like in previous figure, we can also learn the positions of these kernel points following the idea of deformable 2D convolution. The basic idea is to add a learnable pointwise offset to each kernel point. And because all operators here are differentiable, therefore the kernel itself can be learn, can learn to adapt its local shape to different input data. However, the optimization trick in deformable 2D convolution that puts a smaller learning rate to these offsets doesn't work well in the case of KPConf. The authors found that these kernel points tend to get diffused from the center, and eventually there may be no, point, no kernel points inside the local neighborhood. To overcome this issue, the authors propose two additional regularization terms to the final objective function. The first is a fitness term, which encourages the kernel points to fit the input data points, therefore better capturing local shape. The second is a repulsive term, which discourages different kernel points to go to the same position, therefore generating more diverse kernels. After adding these two regularization terms, these local offsets can be successfully learned. Given KPConf as building blocks, it's easy to create deep fully convolutional networks for different tasks. In the paper, the authors adopt encoder-decoder unit-like shape architecture where the encoder part extracts multi-scale hierarchical features, and the decoder part is conditioned on specific task. For tasks like segmentation, a symmetric decoding network is applied that gradually upsamples the features to generate a label for each point. For tasks like classification, several fully connected layers are used to aggregate information globally and predict the final class. In the experimental results part, the paper shows state-of-the-art performance in 3D classification and the segmentation tasks when compared with prior works. In particular, the deformable version works better in most metrics due to stronger representative capacity. Here are some qualitative results of the proposed method, where the left is the model predictions and the right is the ground truth. We can see that the model is able to produce very accurate segmentation results. Here's an ablation study on the number of kernels point on the number of kernel points used. By definition, KPCOM supports any number of kernel points, but in practice, the performance tends to saturate at around nine or ten points. Again, the deformable version always outperforms the rigid one. Here we show some analysis of the proposed method. First is the visualization of the learned filters. At the left side, we see the learned filters at first layer, which corresponds to simple shaped concepts like plane, line, or corners. At the right side, we see the learned filters as the third layer, which captures more complex shapes like L-shaped corners, balls, sharp corners, or stairs. Here, we visualize the kernel shape for the rigid and the deformable version. We see that the deformable version can better adapt the kernel points to different input data where the rigid version tends to give a uniform shape in 3D space. Here we show how the proposed regularization terms help learn meaningful local offset in deformable KP conf. Directly optimizing the local offsets without regularization tend to make the kernel points more scattered over the 3D space, while adding the proposed regularization terms help to align them well with the local geometry. In my opinion, one open issue of OKPConf is that the way to determine the neighboring points is kind of handcrafted and less flexible. In particular, the neighborhood is defined as a uniform sized 3D ball, and the weight of each neighbor inside the ball is defined as the relative distance controlled by a single hyperparameter sigma. This may not be a good solution, especially in outdoors point clouds, where the point density change dramatically. 
One possible solution may be to learn from data the neighboring points by projecting each point to a higher dimension metric space. Similar idea has been proposed in 3D SSD paper, which shows better performance in 3D object detection at outdoor scenes. To summarize, this paper overcomes the issues in existing point cloud processing methods and proposes a new type of point convolution with explicit kernel defined by several points. It also proposes a deformable version with stronger representative power for more complex tasks. State-of-the-art performance are achieved on several point cloud tasks from classification to segmentation. Thank you.